welcome everybody. And uh, really, we, we've tried to take the opportunity to bring people together and give some uh, updates on the facility. And it's, it's been a while, actually, since we did uh, our last open house. But well, we're looking at doing quite a few more and on a, on a monthly or a bi-monthly basis uh, as we get closer to actually moving in because there's so much information uh, to share and we're ex excited to share it. So we will take a look at uh, the timeline, sort of where we are, where we've been, where we are today and where we're going into the future and it's the operational readiness stage and the influence of every staff member, every volunteer, the input from our patients and our families, that is the magic that will turn this into an amazing hospital. So that's what this coming year is really uh, all about. So we still have another 264 days uh, of construction until we get uh, the keys to the new facility. The hospital is on budget, it's on schedule, and it's on scope. Really important message to get out to the community because we certainly hear some interesting things um, in terms of you know there being any kind of a delay or any overruns on cost we've been really fortunate um, with our partners in this redevelopment they are top-notch uh, PCL plenary Johnson controls uh, they are very driven and a lot of community is involved in this uh, about 85 percent of our workers come from the local trade unions so when they come into the hospital it's their hospital that they're building and that's a great motivation for people and so we're seeing some uh, some real terrific partnership moving forward so it's a uh, 980,800 square foot and we're calling it a million square feet we've included some parking lot so we are replacing the St. Catharines General and the Ontario Street site both have actually been sold uh, and there will be redevelopment on both of the sites. And as Sue said, there's some really exciting things happening in terms of new regional services coming in. Um, you'll all probably hear about the Walker Family Cancer Center because if we had a prize for a group or a program that has taken the spirit of embracing this new facility and really moving it forward with some, uh, some fun events, that group has done it. So uh, you'll hear a lot of discussion around the excitement of the Walker Family Cancer Center coming in. There's a heart investigation unit, cardiac cath, and mental health services that'll be new to the area. So really we're talking about a world-class design and, uh, and I think we can certainly all uh, hold our heads high when we look at the number of hours that hundreds and hundreds of staff put in to informing the specifications that developed the design and then working with the architects and our architects were not local um, we did have a Toronto uh, firm that partnered with an Australian company uh, who specializes in hospitals and they specialize in the design of hospitals around the world and when they came to the table they were ready to support us they were also ready to challenge us right from the very beginning and nobody wanted to be in the basement but it's a nice basement so it uh, and of course you there are services that just do actually work well in there so we have food services materials management uh, medical device reprocessing uh, it's, all, it's called MDR it's called CSR so it's the sterilization process for all of the um, equipment and the trays and OR material uh, environmental services and the morgue uh, biomedical are in the basement then on level one this is our welcome to the hospital level so as you come in there's a, a main street that takes you in and then the front end is an ambulatory center and on the main floor is the radiation therapy and the new radiation suites and we're going to show you some pictures of that emergency department diagnostic imaging important neighbors in terms of uh, of the of the patient flow um, the entire back end of this facility is mental health all of the services and programs have been put on that ground level in the back end it's the largest program uh, in this new facility so we're really excited about bringing that together and bringing some growth and vitality to the entire mental health uh, portfolio. So this is, a, this is a, an actual site picture. So the bottom is the artist's rendering, 
when we first began, and this is how it's shaping up um, as you come into the new facility. So that's Main Street. And then a patient registration area. So as soon as you come in, you have a place where you're doing your central registration and there's seating and there really is a fireplace and just the notion of a warm and inviting environment uh, for patients and their families when they come in. Uh, urgent care, emergency triage. There's the example, uh, the artist rendering on the bottom and that group has gone through the facility quite a few times. It's a huge difference between what they have uh, today and what they're going into. And here's an example. So this is an example of what a care station looks like. And in that eMERGE department, we put skylights in. The upper corner is what a current treatment bay looks like uh, at the St. Catharines General site. And this is what it looks like in the new healthcare complex. So that's one treatment bay. So it's about double the size, three walls uh, and one curtained area. So it's very different, it's about what, three, four times the size overall of what you're, of what you're working in today. This was my first wow moment when I, when I walked in a few weeks ago. These are the radiation suites uh, and again that group has done an exceptional job of really taking a look at the patient experience and every detail to try and make what can be a very overwhelming experience as comfortable as possible. The detail that they actually thought of is up on the ceiling so that when a patient is going through treatment they're not looking up at acoustic ceiling tiles, they're looking up at something that's very calming and visually pleasing. So each of the rooms has a different theme uh, and all of the equipment in that room, as much of it as possible, is behind a wall. So you don't see the mechanics of the machine. It's a bed and then a really beautiful room um, that surrounds it. Mental health, there's an example of what the um, entrance area looks like and that's what it looks like uh, in development right now. Food court, double story, lots of natural light, there's an indoor um, seating area, there's an outside seating area, and there's a stairwell that takes you to an upper seating area that's right outside of our uh, 175 chair auditorium. So it's a breakout space as well for, you know, if the community wants to come in, we want to do education session, grand rounds, lots of things that can happen. Level two is our most acute floor with the ORs, the heart investigation unit, uh, the ICU, cardiac care beds, and uh, telemetry uh, towards the back. Uh, the academic wing is off to there, and then chemotherapy uh, uh, is on the second floor of that ambulatory building. So that's just a picture of the OR ceiling and the articulating arms that we have in there with these enormous lights uh, and screens and a, an aesthetic column. So as much as possible in today's environment, you're taking things that you would have sometimes or normally seen on the floor and they're being lifted up onto the ceiling. So really important for your ability to clean and the infection control aspects are important throughout this, this building. These are the chemotherapy infusion bays. So some interesting features in there. The, the rectangular light on the top there on the ceiling are actually radiating heat panels because people who are undergoing chemotherapy can, can feel cold and it gives you the opportunity to turn that on or off um, as needed. And a lot of space, again, to provide great opportunities for the staff to care, but also include the family in that uh, in that uh, care environment and give them a place where they can sit and be with their loved one. The heart investigation unit, so this is just the admission um, area as you're coming in. Actually that might be a care station overlooking the um, uh, recovery uh, prep area. And then an example of, of the uh, HIU, is that in Hamilton? And so we worked very closely with Hamilton, they were fantastic partners. Uh, not only in the cancer center development and certainly the Jerevinsky Center and Cancer Care Ontario, but certainly in terms of the uh, HIU development as well, because they will support us as we come online with this new service. Level three 
pharmacy lab, sort of the, the people that support uh, all of the inpatient and all of the clinical uh, processes we put into the middle of the facility. So you have equal access to the floors on top, to the floors on the bottom, and you're able to get uh, to the areas that you need to. And then two uh, medical units uh, in the towers at the back. The uh, diabetes center and the dialysis are in that ambulatory building towards the front. Same concept, a lot of natural light and individual uh, sort of treatment stations for those patients. So the entire building is actually built on the concept that people who are coming in for ambulatory in-out procedures, it's all towards the front of the building so that you can basically get in, get what you need done and move out. The more acute you are and the longer your stay is, the deeper you go into the hospital. And so that again was thinking that our architects brought globally um, to us and uh, they found it very successful, particularly in outbreak situations where you can continue to do some of these essential in and out services and still operate as you need to within the hospital. So a lot of thought went into that design feature as well. 80% private rooms. That's a big one uh, in terms of infection control, patient flow, the whole patient experience, and a lot, a lot of thought and discussion came from uh, our nursing and frontline staff in terms of how to develop these rooms. And one of the things that was really important to them was that as you came in, they wanted care to surround the bed. So they wanted that whole zone to be available to them to provide care, but they also wanted to ensure that the family had a zone as well. And so that's this area here, right by the window. There's a small seating area and a place where family can sit, be a part of the whole care experience, and not ever feel like they're in anybody's way, which can be a very difficult situation when you're in a tighter sort of environment. That's an example of the washroom and the bathroom. They're all um, barrier free, so they're, they're quite large. Level four, women's babies, pediatrics, again, important uh, neighbors in that. And then uh, endoscopy, endocysto, and outpatient clinics, fracture clinic, sort of the, the, the ambulatory component uh, to what we do. And then there's uh, medical surgical units uh, on the other side. Decentralized care stations, so uh, the idea is again to bring the care providers closest to the patients that they're providing care to. Children's health, just some design features that were fun, uh, use of circular design, there's little twinkle lights in the ceilings, trying to make an environment that is going to be welcoming but not childlike because Pediatrics can be anything from a month old to 18 year olds. So if we put a lot of Barney or Mickey or Minnie up there, we would have some very unhappy 17 and 18 year olds. And then two more inpatient units in the towers at the back and a rehab area that's again got lots of natural light and lots of space. Um, if we get the, we're getting the keys at the end of November and we're now mapping out what's it gonna take in terms of bringing staff in, letting them come through, do orientation, do training, testing all of the equipment, the nurse call, the codes, the you know mock patient runs. So really the idea is to try and test as, um, all of the systems and get everybody very comfortable before we ever bring our patients through. So it's gonna be a real tug if, um, and we're testing the end of March to see if we can in fact make that move happen by then. But we're gonna be coming to, we have uh, move coordinators and equipment coordinators and lots and lots of people involved in that discussion. And HCR is our, um, their healthcare relocators. They've done every move in Ontario uh, of any large hospital or any hospital actually. And they're working with us. This is a move team, so there's lots of people involved lots of planning and, and discussion. And so we'll be talking more about establishing the definitive date and then doing a very, very extensive communication to the public on what that's going to involve and, and what's, what's involved with it. So where we've been, 2009 we started uh, with the design development, three years of uh, construction 
and then we are moving forward and like I said the magic happens uh, as we go from a building to a hospital. I've been here about five months now, if I can believe it. Now, it's been five months, and it has been uh, a very a fantastic experience so far, really getting to know the programs and the teams. And I just want to start by saying thank you to everyone, because it really is the frontline staff, the managers, the directors that are really pulling this whole thing together so that we can move into the new hospital and be operationally ready. And I just wanted to comment about what operational readiness is and what that means to us and what it means is that we will be providing patient-centered care on day one that is safe, that has the right people doing the right job at the right time with the right technology and equipment following our right policies, protocols and procedures. So we are really focusing with that goal in mind to get everybody ready for day one in the new hospital. So what are we doing to get ready? Because we are doing lots and uh, we're trying to get that information out to you so that you're aware. We have a number of teams that are in place. Orbit, if you hear that terminology, is our Operational Readiness Building Integration Dr. Team. Amin, that team four, includes three, two, the program eight, leads seven. for every program, department, service that is moving over to the new site. Uh, that team reports up through to Port, which is our senior team where we uh, report and get sort of mitigation strategies in place if we have any areas that we've identified as being potentially at risk for being operational ready. We have integrated planning teams and task force groups that are meeting on a regular basis. Some of those task force groups are the training and orientation, uh, code blue or cardiac arrest strategy task force for the new complex, our portering task force, point of care testing, a uh, pneumatic tube system, anything that's sort of focusing or including a number of different programs or services across the board. We've tried to gather a team together so that we can have input from everyone that who's impacted by that new system. Uh, you may hear of Stantec, and Stantec is our external consultant that's helping us with our work plans, so they're really driving us on a monthly basis to keep on target, meeting those deliverables and uh, activities that we have to meet on a regular basis. Uh, 2P events, these are our process preparation events that we've identified as being necessary for some of the um, processes that we have going over or some of the actual programs. Uh, these are being facilitated by our internal uh, lean coordinators and we're really focusing in on areas that are having major changes as they move over to the new complex. So Emerge is a good example. We've had uh, just last month the Emerge triage did a process preparation. So they identify what their current process is, what their new process will be in the, in the building when they go forward. And really it's based on the fact that the, the physical layout in the new building is so different that we really have to focus in on how we're going to do our work in that new environment especially um, in the inpatient units where we have, as Gloria mentioned, the decentralized care stations. So we're, we need to rethink the way we do our work. When we work in a centralized nursing station or care station, everybody comes back to that central spot and then you go out and see your patients. But with this, we have four different care stations. So we had to identify and think about where would the documentation occur? Where would that uh, unit communication clerk or ward secretary sit in that new environment. So we're working through those on a regular basis and the exciting thing is is that each of those 2P events we're getting people into the building. So on day three of that event the staff that have been participating in those will go into the new building and try and actually walk that process or at least get a sense of what the environment will be when they get there. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about equipment. We have over 50 25,000 pieces of equipment, new equipment that will be going to the new building. So we really have to focus in from a project management side of the house on how we're going to teach and educate everyone on the new equipment. So there'll be vendor fairs coming up in the, in the fall that'll be full day fairs when all of the vendors, once we have successful vendors for every piece of equipment, they'll be coming into the building and they'll be bringing equipment with them so that you can get hands on, touching the equipment and really trying to get an understanding of what that equipment will be that you'll be using in the new building. And how do you get involved? Because that's a question we've had asked on numerous, uh, numerous occasions. And we really want the frontline staff to be as involved as they can be. This is an example of the mock-up site. So we have an inpatient room, an ICU room, um, the chemotherapy infusion bays, an exam room, and a treatment room. So you can get out there and get a sense of what the new building will look like. Right now, we have a little bit more tight control on our access to the new building. And what we hope is that as we transition now over the next eight months, we will have more and more access to the new building as we go forward. And, uh, and 
and process discussions will have been concluded by then. So hopefully over the next eight months we'll be doing all of the work to get our processes in place so that when we get to the new building we can walk them and map them out and get everyone prepared so that on day one we're ready to care for our patients. Part of what the communications team is doing for operational readiness is they've identified going forward that we will be having more of these types of tours with different areas within the organization so that we can put those up on Kojiko and have access to them on our website so that staff that haven't been able to tour the hospital yet can have some sense of what their area or the different areas in the organization will look like. Uh, and this is our opportunity to be able to showcase some of the exciting features that we have in the new building. Other areas that you can access for more um, pictures are our share site, um, the actual NHS website, uh, the Kojiko website which will have the videos up and running for us as well and uh, we also have some um, a bulletin board outside of the operational readiness manager's office on the main floor here at St. Catharines General where we'll be putting information up and then the other display case we're sort of going to be taking over as of uh, the end of March and we're going to have as much information as we can to share there as well. In addition, we really wanted to be able to access and get you access to be able to ask questions, to hear information. So we have a schedule of events, as Gloria had mentioned earlier, town halls coming up over the next um, year as we get forward and get ready for moving to the new hospital. We're trying to have some themes to those so that you'll have a sense of what you'll be coming to when you come to the, to the town hall sessions. So in May, what is different? What is going to be different for you at the new site? So we're going to try and get that right down to the frontline staff as you go over what for you will be different when you get there. Um, in July, who is Johnson Controls? What does that mean to you as a, as a, a, you know, a practicing worker in the new complex? Uh, September, finding your way in the new hospital. Uh, November, preparing to say hello and goodbye to your current workspaces because we really want to make sure that you have the opportunity to, as a team, say goodbye to your environment and to uh, the, those that work adjacent to you because all of those things are likely going to change in the new hospital. In December, what happens next? In January and through to March, the countdown. And so we'll probably update some of that as we get closer and we identify from you what you really want to hear from us as we move forward. And just really want to focus in on that one million square feet of care and I'm not sure how many of you have read the newspaper articles but we had um, uh, one of our construction workers mother was in the hospital and when she uh, was in she really was focusing in on yes you're building this one million square foot hospital but how are you going to be able to manage to, to provide one million square feet of care. And so that we've sort of taken on as our slogan and you'll see that on your bracelet uh, that you ho hopefully all received and there's more on the tables. And I just want to mention that these bracelets um, really are our symbol going forward for operational readiness and for the move to the new hospital. 